Hey guys, welcome back. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my next printer purchase, which I am not entirely sure what I'm going to get yet. I have two printers back here now. This one here is the Formlabs Form 2. Prints just phenomenally well, beautiful prints. However, the size is pretty limiting. It's not a huge printer and it's very expensive to print with because it uses resin. The resin is not cheap. This printer, on the other hand, is uh, way cheaper. This thing only cost me 278 bucks versus this one was like $4,000 after all said and done, uh, shipping and materials and so forth. So this one here is only 278 bucks. Um, I think I made it paid like, uh, like maybe $100 in supplies to ship it and everything. It was kind of expensive to ship. So it's still cheap. I uh, built it myself and it's been a trooper. I've used it for two years now and it has not been flawless. It's worked well. It's worked fine for my own projects, but that's where this whole thing comes in is that I get a lot more client work now because I'm all freelance. So uh, I get tons of work where I need to print things. And I'm in the middle of a project right now that requires a lot of printing. And I spent the last two weeks printing my own stuff. It came out flawlessly. This is like a sprayer nozzle to do the chroming spray. Printed like 3PO parts that come out really good. You know, 3PO hands. All this stuff has come out great. But as soon as I start the client work, everything starts going wrong. And I'm using the same materials, same setup. And you know, it takes me twice as long to print things. So I really need a more reliable printer. I want something newer. I want it to be a little bit better quality. This one is fine for my own stuff, but when I'm doing stuff for a client, I want it to look a little bit nicer. And it's more the reliability. I just want to be able to go do something else and not stress out that I have to come watch the printer and make sure it's not messing up every two seconds. So um, I've got a couple options here. I've down, I've kind of two main printers that I'm looking at right now. And uh, I want your opinion on if you guys think one is better or if there are competitors to these printers that I am not aware of because I've looked around, but I, I always see the reviews on these two and I'll we're going to go over some of the things. So the first one that I will probably get, I think this is the, the highest one on my list is the Prusa i3 Mark II which is, um, it's a pretty new printer, but it's got just a ton of features that relieve me of stress. So it's got, uh, let's see, filament detection. So if it's running filament, if the filament runs out, the print will stop. And I believe, if I've read this correctly, I maybe have this wrong, but it also detects whether the filament is moving. So even if there's filament in the feeder, if it stops moving for some reason, like if there's a clog, it will also stop the print and give you a chance to change the filament so your print doesn't get ruined. That's huge because uh, like for something like this where I got, I'm printing this big part and then it gets a clog and then it goes bad. And this was, you know, five hours into this print and now I got to start it over. And that's, here's another one. And then here's another one. So these prints, look at three of them all jacked up because of a clog uh, each time where if I had the other printer, it would stop and I wouldn't ruin the print. Uh, it also has skip detection. So back to the same print, here's another thing. So here we've got a, another piece of this golf ball. If I turn it the light the right way, you can see there's a line right here and there's another one up, up here somewhere. You could probably see it easier on the sides, maybe. It's this and this. So basically what happened is I had it printing really fast and as it's shuttling across to uh, in between print steps, it moves really quickly. It catches a little bit and uh, causes the the gantry. I don't know what you call it. The little the whole contraption that moves the extruder skips, and then all of a sudden, every layer above that is offset by a millimeter or two. Super annoying. So this print finished. Um, I can rescue it, but I don't want to have to do that. So the i3, the Prusa i3 Mark III. Did I say Mark II before? It's Mark III. Um, has um, like a off like if the layer gets offset it'll correct itself supposed to which is a huge plus too it also has the ability to uh pick up where it left off if there is a power outage which is also huge because even if you have your printer on a battery backup if your power goes out 
for an hour, the battery backup is not going to run your printer long enough to maintain that. So just to know that if it shuts off, you can come back and it will restart. It'll just pick up right where it left off and your print is not ruined. It's got um, auto leveling. So it checks every time to make sure your print bed is level. It goes around, it's got a little sensor, doo -doo -doo, and it checks, I think, nine spots. And every time you print, it'll be level, and it'll be straight to the print bed, which is beautiful. So all of those things are things that constantly I worry about and or can screw up a print if they get a little bit screwed up. So the printer handles all those things. Also, the print bed has um, compensation for heating so if you have a heated print bed it, it heats more around the edges where like my old one would get a little cooler if i'm printing an abs in particular if i print too close to the edges it doesn't adhere as well and it might warp um so that's a, a big plus and it also has this cool sheet that is magnetized down so you slap it on and the print bed is just like the sheet you can remove it and then you flex it a little bit and the print comes off you don't have to scrape away really really great so all giant pluses so that is why that's kind of my my top contender right now the other one that i'm looking at is the creality cr10s which is like a large format printer they have one also the s5 which is just enormous print size and i think it's almost 12 inches by 12 inches by like 16 inches like huge print size which is really really handy for a lot of stuff However, it does not have all of those backup features that the Prusa has. So I'm kind of on the fence. Like, I really want that print volume, but I also really want the reliability. Um, and my main thing here that I, I guess my big question is, uh, are there competitors to these printers that are in a similar price range? I've seen one called uh, the Annette, or maybe it's Anne if it's French, I'm not sure. And it's A-N-E-T. That is a competitor, it's a, kind of like a clone of the uh, CR10 that I was just talking about, and it's about $100 less. I, it, build quality looks similar, but I don't know much about it. Um, anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, whichever one I end up getting, I will build it here. I'm kind of looking in that range. I want something that's sort of a kit, but reliable. Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I would, I would love to hear about it. And, um, yeah, we're going to go from there. Hopefully in the next uh, few weeks I'll have a new printer and we can build it here. I'll put the whole thing together in front of you, whatever I get. Uh, but thanks for stopping by. Sorry for that long-winded thing. And I'll talk to you guys soon.